This video not intended for children. Mr. Chief Productions presents Crazy Toy People. Episode 1 follow up. G1 Transformers Hall unboxing. The sale of Soundwave. Remember, please subscribe. And my eBay store is Brutally Used Toys. Hi YouTube, thanks for coming back. I'm uh, Toy Man Jack and this is Crazy Toy People. And the other day I uploaded a video called G1 Transformers Unboxing in which I had acquired a tote full of G1 Transformers. And I showed them one by one as I brought them out of the tote and talked about them a little bit. And the second video I uploaded uh, showed each one of those uh, Transformers and which accessories that came with them. After that, I went ahead and uh, started putting the ones that I don't need for my personal collection online at my eBay store. And um, some of them I put up as buy it nows, and some of them I, I am running as auctions, and they're still running as we speak. But the first one to sell was Soundwave. So I wanted to show that to you. Again, here it is. And here's the accessories. And I'm about to ship it out. And so I wanted to talk about what it sold for, which was uh, $49.99 with free shipping. And I want to talk about why I would sell that as a buy it now instead of as an auction. Um, there are prices on eBay for this particular toy ranging anywhere from, depending which part or how complete it is, from $20 up to $200 some dollars for the same toy exact same toy. So how did I land on $50 as a buy it now? And what does that mean that it sold for $50? Um, I bought this lot as a group lot for a certain amount of money from a guy who, uh, these were his childhood toys. And I gave him what I thought was a fair price for the whole collection, intending to sell it and keep some parts for myself. Um, so when it's you sell just one toy out of a whole collection like that for $50, that sounds like, wow, that's a lot of money, but you have to take into consideration that um, this toy is also going to be hit with some eBay fees, somewhere between 12 to 15% of any final sales price is going to go to eBay fees, and um, I have to ship it because I have free shipping, and I will ship priority in my uh, shipping these days because... I was having problem with the postal service and uh, things that I wasn't sell sending priority sometimes weren't arriving and I would have to refund them uh, purchase price to the buyer and I couldn't track them with a tracking number if they uh, went like as a standard shipping or media mail. So now everything I sell, I sell, I send through a priority mail with the postal service so I can get insurance on it. It's insured and um, which comes with a free hundred dollars worth of insurance and on a priority shipment. And um, I get a tracking number. So I, I can see as soon as I give it over to the postal service, I know it's in their system and they're responsible for it. And if they lose it, then it's on them. So it's no longer on me. And that's the only way I can guarantee um, my item to my customer. So uh, to send an item like this, this one I think is going to Oregon or something, which is the other side of the country. It's going to be at least $10 to ship it. The cost of the box is nearly a dollar. So we'll say $10 for shipping, um, 12, 15% on uh, fees on a $50 item. That's a, what, like a, between five and $7.50. So say seven fifty, so nearly seventeen bucks is going to be off the top on this item, which leaves me with about thirty three dollars, not including my time to uh, photograph the item and uh, describe it on eBay, and then taking time to wrap the item and drive it to the postal post office in town. So when you add it all up, that's what I'm getting for this toy. And that sounds great, but I'm in business. I don't have a job. I don't have an income outside of doing toys for a living. So 
this isn't a hobby for me. And uh, when I purchase an item like this, I have to think in terms of some type of profit. So for me to justify investing in a toy like this, which costs $50 online for um, a toy collector, for me as a toy dealer, it doesn't make sense to me to get into this toy for any more than $15 max. And that's complete. And that's hard to do because I'm competing in the world with all the collectors out there who are willing to pay up to and including full retail price for it because they need it for their collections. They desire the toy. So um, it's hard for me to, I can't buy on auctions typically on eBay uh, to get a good enough deal to justify my investing in it, to turn around and profit on it. So I have to rely on uh, finding toys in the field through uh, garage sales, estate sales, local auctions, or uh, word of mouth. And so that's the hardest part of my job is uh, finding new inventory because I have to find it, I have to store it. That's another fee I forgot to talk about. When you have a bunch of this stuff as an inventory, which you need to have, a lot of inventory to make sure that you can, uh, when you can't find stuff, you have stuff to keep selling because you need to sell all the time. So you have to pay storage fees or store it in your house and live with your merchandise. And uh, family members tend to, you know, look, look down on that idea. So you end up paying storage fees in addition to all the other fees that I mentioned earlier. So um, I wanted to talk about that because I think a lot of collectors don't quite understand what goes into it from a dealer point of view when you're investing in toys as a way of making a living. Um, what you need to, the price points you need to get at. Now, if this was a toy that I needed for my personal collection, I'd be willing to make pay more for it. You know, um, every toy that I buy is a long-term investment. But if I need it in my own personal collection, I'm much more willing to pay closer to retail, if not full retail for a toy, because I'm planning on sitting on it for a while and I have to assume that the value of that investment will go up in time. Um, that's not always the case. And as I mentioned in the first video, I actually bought a toy once for more than it was worth just because I wanted to have it and couldn't find it at a reasonable price anywhere else. Um, and that happens. Um, so, what am I trying to get at? Oh, how did I come up with that $50 price tag as a buy it now when I uh, see prices all over the board? Well, the main thing was the condition of the toy itself. Um, if you look at it, you can see it's a pre-rub sound wave, which is cool. So it's an earlier version. It has stickers on it. It's got a little chrome wear up here, but that's typical for a die cast toy. So that's not a problem. The only real problem issue with this toy was some paint wear, but it was this uh, mechanism here. This uh, When you depress this uh, button, it ejects the cassette. And when I do it, it doesn't just pop out and swing out the way it's supposed to. It pops out just a little bit and you have to pry it open with your hands your fingernail. That's very typical for this toy, but for me, since it's not a perfect toy, I can't expect to uh, command full retail on this if it's not perfect. If it's not worthy of, you know, highest collector value, I'm not going to charge that. The other thing is, as a dealer, I want my customers to feel like they got a good deal for their money that they didn't necessarily pay full retail. If they pay 80% of retail for something, they can feel good about their purchase. And half of uh, toy collecting, in my opinion, is about how it makes you feel. If you could buy a toy that you want and you pay 100 to 120% of retail, you're not going to have that feeling of, oh, I got a great deal. You're going to feel like, well, I wanted this thing, I bought it, and now I own it. And some toy collectors are willing to do that. But most of the toy collectors and dealers in my world that I interact with, they want to feel like they made a good purchase. So as a, as a dealer, I have to figure that into my sales price. If this toy is worth $100 and I sell it to you for $80, you can feel good about that. 
in this case, if it's worth, you know, $60, $70, I put a $50 price point on it and it sold right away as a buy it now because anybody who collects Transformers knew that was a more than fair price because the toy came with all of its accessories. It's complete. The only damage is actually to the uh, cassette that came with it. Buzzsaw has a broken head clip, so it doesn't hold in place. But the head's there, so it's a nearly complete and nearly perfect example of an old toy that is highly sought after. So it was a good investment for my buyer. I think they should be perfectly happy um, and delighted with this toy, this example. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Thanks for following along. Please remember to subscribe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time.